it's important that we talk about what has facilitated the platform itself to happen today and what has really been the fabric of society that has helped the world to really overcome or be overcoming this COVID situation, which is technology. And we have with us here in the platform studios, Mr. Chika Nwobi, technology entrepreneur, technology enthusiast, technology man. Uh, <laughs> and Tola is joining me back on the panel. So over to you, Tola. Okay, hi, Chika. So um, one thing that was very, that kept on occurring in all the speeches that we heard today from the governors or the to and their, the answers to their questions mm. was the use of technology mm. from uh, Governor El Rufai to Governor Sonwulu. It seemed like te technology was enabling them to even respond to the pandemic. And also, like you mentioned, we're here, the first virtual um, mm -hmm. platform, and it's gone seamlessly. So what, what do you think the role of technology is? We know what the, the role is now during the pandemic, but what do you see as the role of technology in a post-COVID world? Thanks. Thanks a lot, Tola. Um, so yeah, it's really been, if we, if we didn't already know, um, listening to all the governors and vice presidents and um, really just talk about the, what tech has done for them already um, and how they are looking at tech as one of the, as a source of solutions to the nation's problems moving forward. Um, it really gives a, a really big sense of responsibility. Um, not to be overly dramatic, but I think like if you think about like Nigeria coming out of independence, like journalists played a very important role in helping us come. I think about when I, when I was younger, we were in military rule and trying to become back democratic and lawyers really played a very um, pivotal role. And it seems that in this post like oil revenue economy and post COVID e economy that the tech sector um, has a huge, um, really the key driving role. And this, this is like entrepreneurs and really young entrepreneurs. Um, we're seeing them stepping up. We're seeing, I'm very proud of what our industry has done so far. We have people like 54 Gene that helped with um, um, expanding Nigeria's testing capacity during this uh, COVID. We have people like Farm Crowder in the agri sector. We have people that are helping the schools to get online education. Um, and one area that I, I personally um, have gotten involved in is really around how do we create jobs at scale very rapidly. We have a huge unemployment problem and a um, uh, foreign exchange problem. And when we look globally, we look at con countries like India, Ukraine, Poland, top 10 software engineering countries. And one thing that we see is that most of them have 0.3% of their population writing software for other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. So India has 0.3% of its population. That's 3.9 million people. And they generate $120 billion a year of wow. export re of, of dollars into India by being in India writing software. Ukraine 0.3%, about 100,000 people, Poland and so on. If Nigeria had that, that would be about 700,000, between 600 and 700,000 people. And this is what um, I call the Decagon mission, the mission that over a decade, Nigeria should get to where it has 0.3% of its population writing software for the world, for Nigeria, solving Nigerian problems, but also for the world. That would generate $20 billion, at, based on the, the amount of money that comes per person. That would effectively replace our oil revenue. Um, but it would do it in a different way. It would be instead of going to, through the um, infrastructure of large oil companies with a lot of um, equipment, it would be going straight to young people who can then spend on their younger brothers, on their parents, on healthcare, on, 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 um, on leisure, and therefore create um, a tremendous amount of jobs for this nation. And so this is what um, I and people, you know, people who I work with have dedicated the next decade to do. Um, but also in doing that, to also provide the brilliant people that can then build software for governments, that can then yeah. build software for the healthcare industry, that can then build software for geoeducation. Um, and I think, um, you know, quite frankly, um, even though this, this um, period of COVID has really made us ask a lot of questions um, about Nigeria, um, and the situation we find ourselves in, I really um, have, I'm coming out of this period um, with a great sense of optimism, mm -hmm. because I've already seen what uh, my peers have done, um, not just in Nigeria, um, Nigerians, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world, what they've done in tech and what they've done with tech. And I'm very confident that they are going to step up. So I think this next decade is going to be very interesting. Fantastic.